Hey y'all, welcome to my new channel. I'm making this video because I wanted to help out all you girls out there, um, brides-to-be for weddings that you're gonna be planning. And I'm gonna share with you my top 10 tips that I wish that I knew before planning my wedding because there's a lot and honestly, I could make so many videos. So um, if you like this video, let me know in the comments down below um, and I can make a whole series out of this because there's a lot. <laughs> um, the first tip that I have is gonna be make a list, whether that's on paper, notepad, your computer, make a list of everything. And literally, I mean everything because you're gonna look back at this list and check things off that you may have forgotten. And a list was probably like one of the most important things that I did when I planned this. And I had no experience in the past, never been to like mini weddings or anything like that, never helped plan a wedding. So once you have that list made, you can go back and check things off that you've done so that you can keep track of the things that you've already done. All right, tip number two is you want to shop cheap. And what I mean by that is you wanna to go to thrift stores, Facebook marketplace, garage sales, stuff like that. And with your list that you made in tip number one, you wanna write down things that you need, whether that's for your dessert tables, wine glasses, cake cutting utensils, chargers, you name it. Even candles, we bought like, we got a really good deal on candles and we spent like 120 bucks for like literally a million candles. And I went to Hobby Lobby and one candle was like 20 bucks, so shop cheap. Some other things that we got online um, or at like thrift stores were for my dessert table, I had like these uh, platters and they were just like these really nice like antique platters that were probably made in like the 1950s. And I don't know, I love antique things and I love having those like little things thrown into my wedding and we got those for literally like 50 cents. But I would say um, save the things that you care about for Etsy and Amazon because if you shop cheap to begin with, then you can have that extra money to splurge on. So for example, my wedding shoes were really important to me for like the detail photos. Um, I wore flats, so they're a little dirty, but these were my wedding shoes and they had a little ribbon in the back you could tie and the ankle was little pearls, which surprisingly were super comfortable. I would highly recommend these. I got these off Etsy. They are Kaylee P. You can go to kaleep.com. I'll link that below too. But yeah, these were my wedding shoes and I absolutely love them. So I just thought I'd show you those. Um, they were a little pricey, but it was totally worth the money to me because that was something that I cared about. I got so many things off Etsy. Etsy has literally everything you can imagine. So if you, whatever you're looking for, Etsy's got it. <laughs> and a lot of times, if you, little tip here, if you put it in your cart, um, and you don't buy it, then that um, owner of the shop will sometimes send you a message and give you a discount code because they want you to buy their products. So just kind of leave it in your car for a little while. <laughs> that might've been like, whatever, but leave it in your car for a little while, they'll send you a discount code and you can get like 10% off. Yeah, I just, I love it. I love Etsy, they have everything. Same with Amazon. Sometimes Amazon has some um, similar stuff to Etsy but they are a little cheaper, and if you have Prime, they get there like super fast, so Amazon's your best friend. All right, tip number three is to keep organized. We kept Google Docs, spreadsheets, numbers, if you have that, even pages, I know for iPhones and iMacs and stuff. Um, that is a great way to keep organized because you have this spreadsheet to look at. We use that for our invite list, so if you have um, we had about 150 guests, including vendors and stuff, so it was nice to have that spreadsheet um, where you can go in and you type in their name, their address, um, how many people are coming, how many people are under 21, how many are over 21, um, how many guests they're bringing, the names of the guests, all on like a really nice number spreadsheet. And that was so helpful. It's still helpful right? whenever we write the thank you cards and everything. I already have their addresses there and who came, who didn't. Um, you can color code it, it's amazing. Same with the timeline, we made a Google Doc. What we did is we made out a timeline on that Google Doc and every little thing that we did that day down to mom's gifts, putting on your shoes, like, 
stuff, the bridesmaids gifts, everything. We wrote that on our timeline and we actually stuck pretty close to it the actual day of the wedding. It was so helpful. You can print that out the day of the wedding and whoever's coordinating your wedding, whether that's a family member or whatever, you have that timeline to go step by step um, throughout the night. And I just cannot recommend that enough. All right guys, tip number four, and I cannot stress this enough, is hire a coordinator for the day of your wedding or a planner or designate a family member, but I recommend hiring one if you can afford it. Um, I would say it was well worth the money. My coordinator, she was amazing. She even helped me um, not necessarily like plan my wedding because we did most of that, me and my mom and my mother-in-law, but um, she kept track of things for us even before. So technically a coordinator's job is to kind of coordinate things the day of the wedding and make sure everything goes smoothly, tell people to go when and where and what, and she was amazing. I can't even tell you how many things she did throughout the night that just I couldn't imagine not having somebody do it. I mean, even like a family member, like my mom or something, that would just put way too much stress on them. And they I feel like they wouldn't be able to really enjoy the whole night. And you know, they're supposed to be there and be a part of your day along with you. It's not just you who gets to enjoy your day. I think that family members would love to enjoy it just as much as you. So hiring a coordinator was well worth the money for me. I can't even tell you how much stuff she did. I mean, it was amazing. So yes, hire a coordinator or a planner or a designated family member. You'll thank me later. Tip number five is start early. And what I mean by start early is you wanna do it like six months in advance at least because um, when it comes down to like shipping and stuff like that, when I was buying things online like Etsy or Amazon, you name it, it was sometimes two months in advance that I was gonna get it. And if that was like my shoes or my veil or just little things like that, cake toppers, favors, that stuff, you never know when it's gonna ship. Even if they say like, it'll get here on this day, sometimes it doesn't. And especially with COVID, you never know um, when it's gonna actually get there. So I'm so thankful I did that. I wasn't even told to do that, but I was just so excited to get started that I did it like six months in advance. And luckily some stuff did come in when it said it would, but some stuff did not. And a lot of things, not a lot, but some things were messed up. Like my flower girl robes, they were the wrong size with the wrong names, if that makes sense. So I had to send those back and then wait for them to come again. And it was a big, mess and i'm so glad that i ordered those ahead of time because we wouldn't have had them the day of and that is just another thing that you would stress about that you don't need to stress about so yeah start early um especially your wedding venue because those go by super quick there's tons of brides like me who had to cancel and reschedule and yeah just schedule your venue way ahead of time so that you have it set in stone and ready to go all right guys tip number six is wait as long as possible. I know this sounds bad, but wait as long as possible to alter your dress. My wedding was actually on June 26th of 2021, so this past weekend when I'm filming this, um, and I actually bought my dress in January of 2021, and it was super tight. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to be tight because in the store you try on a bigger dress and they kind of cinch it in the back and they sized me and everything. My dress came in the mail in February and it was tight. Like I couldn't even sit down. So um, I eventually took it to a seamstress. I waited till April to take it to a seamstress because I wanted to lose a little bit of weight. Um, <laughs> That didn't happen, so in April, I took it to a seamstress and I was like, hey, I wanna get this altered. And she was great, she altered it for me. I went back for a second fitting and I lost weight. I don't know how, I wasn't trying, but it might've been stress with the wedding. But anyways, I lost some weight and she had either taken it out just a little bit too much or I had lost more weight than I intended. But um, it was like falling off of me, so she actually we had to reschedule which kind of sucked because she was like an hour away but we had to reschedule and she took it in even more and then i came back for the second or i guess the third fitting now and it was still loose on me and i was like you took it in and she's like yeah i know but i guess i just kept losing the weight and i didn't mean to um, which I guess is a good thing, but not. <laughs> but anyway, she was like, how about you come back at the end of June, like right before you get on a plane 
to go to your wedding because I had a destination wedding. I'll get into that later. But um, I was like, okay, sounds good. And that's exactly what I did. Luckily, I didn't lose any more weight and she didn't have to alter it anymore. It looked great. I felt beautiful in it. I could sit down. And yeah, we took it on our way. And that was one of the best decisions ever because had I lost more weight, she would have had to hurry and like altered it again really quickly. Um, but I still would have had time before I left for the wedding. And I know with a lot of brides, sometimes that's an issue. Um, they get it altered and they gain weight or they lose weight and then they're stuck with this dress that doesn't fit them the way they want it to. So if you can, I would highly, highly recommend it. My seamstress was amazing. Hopefully you go to one that is too. And if they're not, go to somebody else. <laughs> All right guys, tip number seven is add sentimental details into your day. Um, we all have heard the saying, something borrowed, something blue. Something borrowed, something blue. Something, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, right? That's how it goes. Well, do that because I did that and I loved it. It was so fun. For the something blue, I just had a little light baby blue ribbon tied around my bouquet. And for something old, I actually had my um, mother's veil from her wedding turned into my blusher veil. So if you don't know what a blusher veil is, it's just the veil that goes over your face. Um, and then either your dad or your groom lifts it over whenever you meet them at the altar. Um, so yeah, I had her old veil made into my blusher veil and it was so special and I'm so glad that I did that. Something borrowed I did was my mother-in-law actually had her wedding dress made into a pillow for the ring bearer pillows and it's beautiful. This is my mother-in-law's pillow that she had made from her wedding dress and this is what we tied to or tied the rings to at our wedding. So yeah, super cute. This was my something borrowed. I gotta get this back to her. And then something new, don't go out and buy something new just for your something new. I mean, everything you're buying is new, like your dress. So that's what I did. But yeah, I just wanted to recommend adding something sentimental into your day because it's special and it also is like something to talk about when your guests arrive and you'll be like, yes, actually my mom's veil that she wore at her wedding day. And I just think it's something cool to do. Tip number eight is Nobody cares about favors. Literally, you guys can argue me on this, but in my opinion, nobody cares. From what I heard from other people whenever they planned their weddings was they had spent so much money on these favors and nobody took them. And I was like, well, I'm trying to save money, you know? So I didn't buy any favors. Um, we did, however, have a seating chart. So we bought little name tapes for everybody that was there. They were made out of wood, so they were super cool and unique. You can get those off Etsy too. Those were kind of like our favors and we laid those out on everybody's chargers before they sat down. I think that that is a good place to save your money. Something special that I did at my wedding was the guest book was a Polaroid guest book. So we had like this little Polaroid out there um, with a ton of films for people to use if they ran out and then they took a Polaroid film and then they stuck it in the guest book and wrote something nice but something you could do instead of a favor is maybe say like take a picture with you you know and then that would be something that they'd actually care about and keep forever and they'd be like this is the time we went to so-and-so's wedding so there's something sentimental you could do for people instead of a favor that would be more bang for your buck i don't know okay. tip number nine is spend your money on things that you care about save your money shop cheap on little things but when it comes to the big stuff your photos your dress your shoes stuff like that you want to put your money there we spent a lot of money on our photographers and our videographer it was so worth it like at first i was like are you kidding me this is so much money like this is not going to be worth it and then we got the photos back um and it was like let me tell you worth the money i would definitely if you care about stuff like that like i personally care about a wedding video like i've watched them for as long as i can remember and i've always wanted one and i made sure that i had one so 
Um, if that's something you care about, put your money there because you will not regret it. Another thing that you could spend your money on would be something like a honeymoon. So if the honeymoon is what is important to you, not so much your ceremony and reception, put your money there. Um, personally, my husband and I, we, we did like a small little honeymoon. We went to um, a hotel and spa and we just got our massages and relaxed and just soaked up doing absolutely nothing and not being stressed about the wedding. So that was our honeymoon, that was special to us. But if your honeymoon is let's go to Bora Bora and stay in a cabana and splurge, do it. Okay y'all, tip number 10, the one you guys have been waiting for and that is do not stress. Something will go wrong on your wedding day. It's just inevitable, it's gonna happen. You just have to roll with the punches and laugh it off because in the end, you're not gonna remember those small little things that went wrong. You're gonna remember the big picture, who was there for your wedding, supporting you and all your loved ones, people you really care about are there for you guys and that's really all that matters. It doesn't matter if somebody stole your Polaroid camera. <laughs> that is not gonna matter 50 years from now. <laughs> That happened to me, so, but it's okay, it's fine. But anyways, point being, don't stress because your wedding day is gonna be beautiful and I guarantee those little things that happen are not gonna matter at the end of the day. In the long run, the little things are not gonna be what matters. It was who was there for you, loving you and supporting you on your big day. All right guys, that is all I have for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video or you learned something new, let me know in the comments down below. It would mean so much if you guys would like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos or a part two on things that you wish you knew before you planned your wedding. I have so many more about the day of or just more tips and tricks. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.